Hi there, this is David, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Heroes Trails of the Sky the Third. Today, we're looking over here because there's some Dull Knight books on the bookshelf. Yeah, we can, uh, read all these here. They, uh, wow, 1 through 11 all in one book, seriously? Yeah, those things first appeared in, um, Song of the Ocean, so, yeah, we'll be reading those in yet another bonus episode. But today, since I went ahead and I stuck Oliver and Mueller in my party last time, I figured we might as well go ahead and do their door. We have plenty of doors to do. We have Sun, sun Door 4, Star Door 6, 7, and 8. So today we're going to be knocking out the first half of Star Door 8, because it is a rather long scene. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to put the doors in their own videos, you know, just make it clean rather than having, you know, half of a door and half of a story or half of a dungeon just kind of all conglomerated together. It just makes more sense to do it this way. So, yeah. Huh. Maybe we'll get to see how they first became friends or something? Maybe some sort of sexual encounter? Who knows? I kind of doubt it, though, but maybe. Oh, okay, so a month after the events of, um, second chapter... Oh, yeah, we saw that. Oh, okay, so... Ambassador Crana, I think his name is? Oh, you didn't even know? You're the Rambonian ambassador and you didn't realize who you're talking to? Well, he is in disguise, so I can kind of sort of see it. Oh, wow, um... <laughs> Uh, you're still a noble. Yeah. Um, I kind of beg to differ. You still can pull some strings. Oh, like what? Huh. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that's not exactly the best advice that you would give to a, a prince. Oh, this poor ambassador, yeah, he was just trying to help out in his own little way. Yeah, no kidding, I kind of agree. Oh, um, if you say so. I like how Vander's the voice of reason. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, the prince doesn't mean any harm by it, it is all just in jest. He's like, I have? I've actually done something good? Who knew? I was just trying to, you know, idle some time away here and collect my check. Oh, well, great. Awesome. Well, at least, um, uh, he realizes that he's doing some good work. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. An Arabonian and here in liberal. Yeah, you know, all in a day's work, saving the world. Yeah, why not? Oh, that is true. That's true, too. Yeah, he doesn't exactly fit the mold of a proper Erebonian. At least as we've seen in Trails of Cold Steel, but, you know... Here in these Trails in the Sky games, they really make the Erebonians off to seem just very cold, very stern, very stark, very, like, distant. But then you really get to know them in the Trez Cold Steel games, and you know, they're just humans just like everybody else. I mean, they do have their problems, what with like the noble faction and the commoners and then their chancellor and all that, you know. But they're still just people, you know, trying to get along as well as they can. Oh, you don't support the chancellor? Wow, it seems like no one supports the chancellor. Oh, huh. Oh, that's good. Oh, yeah, I mean, I honestly do think that the Chancellor is trying his best to reform Erebonia and make it a nicer place for, like, the peasants to live, or just, like, you know, the commoners, the lower class. Um, and it seems that, you know, the nobles, rightfully, don't really like that, because it's kind of, you know, messing up the status quo. Oh, oh, you're leaving. Huh, oh, I guess you do have to get back to Erebonia. Oh, 
Oh, Ambassador Cochrane, yeah. Huh. Didn't she leave for, um, Calvard? I'm pretty sure she did. Oh, the crossbell problem, yeah. Yeah, we heard about that a lot back in, um, second chapter, and a little bit in first chapter, too. Huh. Oh, okay, well, that's good. Yeah, he seems to have everything in order. I would imagine, you know, he would do his job well, and he would, you know, get everything done that he needs to get done. Oh, yeah, it's a nice place. I honestly, of the two that we visited, Erebonia and Liberal, I do like Liberal a lot, a lot better. It just seems like a nicer place, a nicer place to live, and, um, I don't know. Erebonia just seems so militant, you know? Like you have like this iron fist come down upon you for like everything that you do. But that could just be because, you know, you see it from, um, you know, the viewpoint of a military academy and, you know, military students, they're under that, you know, code of discipline here. And, you know, in liberal, you just get to see it from the point of view of, you know, two fun bracers who are just going out to have a good time. You know, and then they get caught up in saving the world and all that too, but, you know, so it could just be the two different viewpoints that you have, but it could just be, you know, the way that the countries run as well. But either way, I like Liberal better. What plans? Oh, okay, well that's good. Oh, okay, huh. Oh. Oh, yeah, well at least you don't have to go and talk to the Chancellor, that would be good. Yeah, definitely. Oh. Huh. The Intelligence Division's 4th Subdivision. Hmm. Wonder what they're doing there. I'm sure it's nothing. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> At least, you know, the commoners of, Ari of uh, Erebonia know how uh, Oliver is. Oh, yeah. Might as well. Oh. Who's there? What's going on? Oh, um, yeah, come on in and, uh, let me see the message. Oh, hey, is that Lecter? Huh. Yeah, no kidding. Oh. Oh, well, you know, at least he came and said hi and all that. <laughs> uh, I think that they're probably going to pass on that, Oliver. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, he's taking an airship, and he's taking the aerosol. It would just be a straight shot. It couldn't take that long. The two countries border each other. I mean, how far could they possibly be? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're kind of used to your antics by now, Oliver. Oh, an outfit. What's wrong with what you have on right now? A white loincloth? Um... Okay, I don't think anybody really wants to see that. Yeah, it would make quite the impact, but not kind of in the way that you want it to. <laughs> oh. Oh, I guess so. Oh, huh. So... Who is Lecter actually working for? Is he working for the Intelligence Division right now? Is he the Secretary of Oliver? Is he just, like, just a Secretary in general for Erebonia? Or is he, like, directly working for the Royal Family? I don't know. Second Secretary. Oh, he's working for the Chancellor! Huh. Oh, okay. Well, if he's working for the Chancellor, then how come he isn't with the Chancellor? Well, I guess, you know, not all secretaries would travel with um, the Chancellor everywhere that they went on his tour of Eastern Erebonia, so I guess it does kind of make sense here. Oh, maybe he's uh, doing other stuff for the Intelligence Division as well. Yeah. Oh, is he like a double agent or something? Oh, 
well, good for you. You know what you're doing. You're a smart cookie, aren't you? <laughs> I'll be counting on you, love. Oh, the moon. Oh, that is nice. That's pretty. Reminds me of something from Summer Night 5. Except that moon had like a big old star on it and it looked like a cartoon, but this actually looks like a real moon. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, I'm sure you'll be back here sooner or later. Both still alive. Hmm. I wonder if Oliver is, like, um, able to sense the forecoming problems in in uh, Erebonia. If he's gonna, like, if he already knows, you know, the undercurrents, the rumblings that are happening in, um, in Erebonia that will, you know, portent Trails of Cold Steel and all that other stuff that's gonna happen. Huh. Well, you know, it's the least that she could do for a fellow ally and, um, you know, royal household member. Huh. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, totally. He did help out back in second chapter. Oh, that's right. So at this point, Joshua and Estelle are out in Erebonia, or... No, no, no. No, no, they didn't go to er Erebonia. They went to Crossbelt, and um, they were looking around for Renee. God knows why, but they were, I guess, trying to reform her and all that. Oh! Oh, well, that's nice of them. Yeah, definitely. Hamel is, um... It got ruined during the 100 Days War and everything, and it's actually Joshua's hometown. And, uh, Karen's grave is there. Karen is Joshua's sister. So, just a little background information there. In case you forgot, like I did. Yeah, last time we mentioned Karen, I was like, who is that? I, I couldn't remember, and then it kind of came to me after the video was over. Oh, um, yeah. Well, you know, Cassius is just doing his duty, too. Oh. Really? They're trying to occupy every single other country? They would have plenty to gain by occupying Liberal. They'd have all of Liberal's natural resources as well as their technological resources, too. Oh. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, I don't think it's going to be a problem anymore. That was kind of a one-time occurrence. Huh. Oh, really? Huh. Well, why would they want to? I mean, if you don't have orbital technology, why would you want to use steam technology? It's like going back and like using like a Walkman when you have an MP3 player. Really? I think that you'll do fine, Chloe. Yeah, these people, they beat themselves up all the time about all sorts of stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, they don't call him the Blood and Iron Chancellor for nothing, do they? Thanks for your, uh, show of support. Whoa! What's going on? Who's there? Oh, it's Hilda. What do you want? Yeah, what's going on? Oh, a guest. Well, who is it? Oh, an irregular guest. I hope it's nothing bad. She seems upset. Oh, really? Well, who is it? What's going on here? Yeah, no kidding. Chancellor Gilead Osborne? What does he want? Why is he here? 
Find out next time. Let's play the Lend Heroes Trails in the Sky the Third. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.